we're still building units that, to be quite honest, you wouldn't put your dog in. I mean, some of these one-bedroom vertical fridges are appalling, and I couldn't imagine anything worse. That's why I'm so opposed <laughs> to downsizing. It's a bubble. It's a glut as well. The, the it's in Melbourne, you can see the bubble before your eyes, in the explosion of high-rise apartments, fuelled by investment that buyers advocate Catherine Cashmore says are largely empty. I've walked through so many buildings where there have been a large number of empty apartments, and it's clear that, that people are buying them and they're not interested in renting them out. And it does seem counterintuitive, but the rents, the yields in Melbourne are so low. It's really only when you get up to this kind of height that you get a sense of just how incredible the scale of building has been, especially here in Melbourne. And the numbers are phenomenal. Melbourne has added around 13,000 new apartments each year for the last two years that have lost value before anyone even turned a key in the lock. Now, in the next two years, that figure is going to rise to 22,000 apartments. It's a hell of a lot in the market that's already saturated. Take a look over there, there's your office block. And over here, these are the apartments that you can see that there's no lights on. There's only a handful of properties in here where the lights are on. And this is the evidence that's showing really that the lights are off and nobody's home. I mean, that's significant because it's eight o'clock on a Tuesday night, we're so close to the CBD of Melbourne that if anyone was going to be home, yeah. they'd be off that tram now, but yeah. they're not. It's, it's, yeah, it's basically right. empty. That's right. These properties are not fully occupied. They are vacant. It wasn't supposed to be this way. The state government's planning blueprints for both Sydney and Melbourne assumed that empty nesters would downsize into apartments and leave their houses in the suburbs behind, opening them up for young home buyers, But the empty nesters aren't coming. We're still building units that, to be quite honest, you wouldn't put your dog in. I mean, some of these one-bedroom vertical fridges are appalling, and I couldn't imagine anything worse. That's why I'm so opposed <laughs> to downsizing. There could be lots of developers who end up being unable to sell their, um, their uh, off-the-plan properties and going bankrupt. I think we're in for a crunch. There's no doubt about that at all.